Hello grade 11s, in this video I'm going to be going over how to state the direction of the following vectors, those that you see over here, A through to B, using all of the three methods that I taught you in the previous video. If you haven't seen the previous video and you, all you need a recap of those three methods, go watch it now, I'll link it in, link it in the description box below, but let's jump right in. Starting off with our vector A. Right, so I know this diagram looks confusing. It looks like a lot's going on. There's a lot going on, but let's focus on A. That's this one over here. Ignore the other vectors. So we're going to be using these three methods to state the direction. Bearing, Cartesian plane from the positive x-axis, and compass directions with angle. So let's start with bearing. How would you give the direction of A using the bearing method? Well, remember bearing is just an angle measured clockwise from the north. So it would be A acts at a bearing of 60 degrees. Why 60 degrees? Because it literally tells you from the north measured clockwise, that's 60 degrees. Easy stuff. Then our second method for direction is measured from the positive x-axis. Remember, this is the positive x-axis. So starting from the positive x-axis, if I go this way, that's going anti-clockwise. I will eventually reach vector A. So starting at the positive x-axis, what is this angle over here that it takes to reach vector A? Well, if this one's 60, this one over here must be 30. How did I know that? Because 60 plus 30 must give me the 90. So my answer over here would be vector A is acting 30 degrees. A is 30 degrees anti-clockwise relative to the positive x-axis. Right, there we go. Method number three. Remember method number three means that we have to, or it involves using our compass point, so the north, east, south, west, as well as an angle, this angle over here. So vector A is 60 degrees. So vector A is 60 degrees. Now, I want you guys to work out if it's north of east or east of north. If you're confused about which way it is, you need to go watch the previous video. But think about this. This vector is going that way. It's going east of north. Okay. Or you can think of it as wedged between the 60 degrees is wedged between the vector and the north. Whatever it's closest to goes last. Right. If you are confused by what I'm saying, you're going to have to go watch the previous video. Right. Let's do B. Vector B. Starting off with our first method, which is the bearing method. Vector B is at a bearing of, remember bearing is the angle measured clockwise from north. So it is that angle over there. You might be thinking, but ma'am, that angle's not labeled. We're going to have to work it out. To get from here to here, that's 90 degrees, right? And then we add this little bit over here. But what is that little bit? Well, if this over here is 45, this must also be 45 because together those must give me 90. So basically it's 90 plus 45, which is 135 degrees. So what I'm saying is from the north line over here all the way to vector B, that is 135 degrees. Right. Method number two is relative to the positive X axis. So here's the positive X axis. Okay, so that's method two. We start at the positive x-axis and we go until we hit vector B. There we go. Now, first question you have to ask yourself, did we go clockwise or did we go anti-clockwise? Well, this way is clockwise. So vector B is, now what angle is this? Again, if that's 45, this has to be 45. So vector B is 45 degrees clockwise relative to the positive x-axis relative to the positive x-axis. Remember, it's always positive x-axis. You are never going to quote in terms of the negative x-axis. Method number three is the compass points. So starting over here, remember we've got north, east, south, west. So vector B is over here. It's going, we can use that one, we can use that one. It doesn't actually matter. I'm going to show you two answers. We can say that vector B is 45 degrees east of south. Or you can say 45 degrees south of east. This is the only time when you can say either one. Because if you have to use this 45 degrees over here, vector B 
is south of yeast. Okay, that's the bottom one. It's going to the south of east. If you had to use this one, it's opening that way. It's going 45 degrees east of south. I hope you see it. Right, let's move on to C. C over here. Here's back to C. Number one is bearing. Okay, so how do we do the bearing again? It's an angle that is clockwise from the north. So all of that, that would be the bearing of C. So how do we get that? Well, let's start from north. From north to east is 90. So that's 90. Then from east to south, that's another 90. So, so far we've got 180. And then we go a little bit further. We go 55 degrees further. So it's 180 plus 55. It's a bearing of 235 degrees. Okay, so basically from the north, that would be 90. That would be 180. Then we add another 150, uh, sorry, another 55. We get 235. That's bearing done. What about relative to the positive x-axis? Well, remember, here's the positive x-axis. So we start at the positive x-axis, and I'm going to go this way. Remember, technically, you could go this way as well. The difference would be in the word, so anti-clockwise versus clockwise, and then obviously the size of the angle. But do whichever one you think makes sense. So I'm going to go this way because the vector C is closer if I go clockwise. I hope that makes sense. So how much did I move clockwise? How much did I move clockwise? Well, I went from here over here. That's 90. And then I added 55. So what is 90 plus 55? 145. So we can say vector C is 145 degrees clockwise relative to the positive x-axis. There we go. Right. Our last method. Our last method is using the compass points. So when it comes to C, we can do it one of two ways. Remember, I keep erasing the compass points, but it's north, east, south, west. So say I want to use this that's given to me over here, this 55. Then how we do it is as follows. Well, the vector is going this way. So it's going 55 degrees. Which way is it going? It's opening up. It's not on the south line. It's bigger than that. It's going to the north, 55 degrees. Sorry, not the north, the west. It's going 55 degrees west of south. But what if we wanted to use this angle over here, which you 100% can even though they don't give it to you, because we know that these angles here together would give me 90. So if this one is 55, what must this star over here be? Well, it would be 90 minus 55, which is 35. So you could say, hmm, I want to use this angle. I'm going to start at the west line and I'm going to go that way. So it could be 35 degrees. I'm going to the south of west. What do you notice about these two angles? they add up to 90. And what do you notice about this? They're swapped around. So if you use 55, it's west of south. If you use 35, it's south of west. Right, last one, D. I hope you're getting this by now. Let's do D. Let's do bearing first. So D has a bearing of, again, bearing is measured from the north line. Let's go all the way around. Now, a quick way to do this would be if I had to go from north all the way back to north, that would be a full rotation that would be 360 degrees. But D is not a full rotation. Okay, It's not a revolution. It's minus this 30 degrees over here. So it would be a bearing of 330 degrees. If you want to add up all the little pieces, you can. So it would be 90 plus 90, which is 180 plus 90, which is 270 plus this angle over here, which would be a 60 degree angle. So 270 plus 60 also gives you 330. Doesn't matter how you get to your answer as long as you get to the correct answer. Right, that is bearing, method number one. Method number two is relative to the positive x-axis. Now, again, like I mentioned with some of the previous ones, we could go this way, we could go clockwise, or we could go anti-clockwise. 
it doesn't matter. You'll get your marks either way. Just to change it up, I'm going to go anti-clockwise. So starting at the positive x-axis, going that way. What angle is that? Well, this part over here is 90 plus 30. So it would be 120 degrees anti-clockwise relative to the positive x-axis. And our last method, last but not least, we're going to use the compass point and our angle. So here I've got a little 30 degrees. Remember that's north, east, south, west. So if I want to go this way, I'm going 30 degrees to the west of north. I'm going this way. I'm going to the west of north. If you wanted to use this angle over here, which you totally can because there's vector D. So you could use this angle, then it would be 60 degrees, but then we would go this way. 60 degrees north of west. And again, these two should always add up to 90. We accept either answer in the exam. I really sincerely hoped that this helped you with the direction. I know it may seem like a very small thing, but if you get the direction wrong in the exam, your answer is wrong. So I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye, everybody.